to go over the outline, the illustration for the, uh, the painting we're going to be doing. And this is mainly for the folks who are working remotely on Facebook Live who aren't able to make it to the, to the event. Um, you can see this canvas here has already been pre-drawn and you have the basic elements of the what the painting is going to be. It's going to be in the painting. I'm going to direct you over here to my right and you can see the finished finish painting which is a desert, uh, nighttime desert landscape. Okay, and so you might be able to uh, recognize this illustration here that was posted on Facebook. Uh, this is going to be able to... I can't let it talk louder. This is for uh, reference if you're going to be sketching a uh, drawing on your canvas at home or your piece of paper. Now, I didn't draw the, uh, the cactus or the cacti on the canvas because I left it out and it's easier to block in the larger areas of color instead of coloring around the cactus. But this is what it, this drawing here is based off the illustration um, posted on Facebook. But if you don't want to go by this uh, illustration or if you are more inclined with, uh, more comfortable doing it freehand, or you have trouble tracing the illustration for any reason, I'm gonna quickly show you how to uh, create something that's similar to the design we have and still get the same effect and obviously these design elements you can change to, to whatever you, you want to your liking so some of the elements we have here we have the mountain ranges we have the moon and we have the cactus and the cacti so they don't have to be exactly like that so if you don't want to follow this, this illustration you can actually just go ahead and uh, make any kind of mountain range you want simply by varying the, the widths and the jaggedness and the shapes of the mountain. Just kind of make an interesting shape, whatever you find that interests you. Again, it doesn't have to be just like the illustration posted on Facebook. It can be any kind of shapes that you find interesting. And there's the moon. And really, it can be something something as simple as that, so it doesn't have to be complicated. As a matter of fact, the easier your design is, the more fun you're going to have. Especially if this is your first time doing any kind of painting or any kind of drawing or art. Yeah, you don't have to have years of uh, edu education or training to do something like this, which is simple uh, ge geometric shapes. Alright, so that concludes like the quick tutorial of the illustration portion of it. And even if you want to skip this all together, you can just go straight in with your paint if you'd like. So it's very open to interpretation. It's very, very much uh, not uh, not bound by the illustration. It's uh, it's whatever you really want it to be. But this is kind of giving you an idea of how to start the illustration, to give you the guidelines to start the painting. Alright guys, uh, we're going to start the painting event now. I want to thank you all for coming out here today. I know some of you have not had too much experience with painting. Some of you have. Uh, the design we chose today is a desert nighttime landscape. It's something simple, something easy. The shapes are pretty simple. As I told some of you, you don't have to follow the design exactly. You are free to make changes in color, composition, as a matter of fact, if you feel like drawing something completely different, that's fine too. If you want to make uh, whatever is in your head, please feel free to do that. Uh, for those of you who want to follow along, I have a sample here of the painting. And then, obviously, I'm going to be painting right along with you guys. And if you have any questions or any problems, please raise your hand or just shout out to me. Throw something at me put your snack bags or whatever. And then I'll be, do my best to answer that. Right. Everybody should have paint already, and it's very simple, very simple uh, colors we're using. We're using black, and I'm going to show everybody online too as well. Just the black, black paint. Maybe a little more. 
You got your yellow. Yellow paint. So if you're following at home, you can see that uh, I'm not using a whole lot of paint to start out with. And these are these are the basically the primary colors. The basic, the most basic colors you you need to start any painting. So you can get lots of colors just by using red, blue, yellow, a uh, little white and black. Okay. Before I begin, I want to do a little introduction of myself. My name is Oscar Romero. Uh, I am a veteran as well. Uh, I'm a veteran of Navy and uh, Coast Guard. Most, re most recently, I just got out of the Coast Guard in 2014. Uh, I got out of Navy longer than that. Uh, I got out in like 2003 in the Navy. Um, so I want to thank you guys all for your, your service. And uh, I want to thank you guys again for being out here and doing this. The first thing I want to do is we're gonna block in large areas. Some of you out here have canvases with uh, little drawings of cactus, right? The cacti. You can paint over those if you want. I recommend painting over them and then going back over it and drawing them in by hand. It's just easier than kind of tracing around the small images, the small details. It kind of gets a little bit difficult, but we'll go over that all together. thing you want to do before you, be, you uh, begin painting is kind of just get your brush wet a little bit dip it in the water and then just dab it on your uh, you should have a uh, paper towel so you just want to dab it on the paper towel after you dip it in the water and you want to do that for all your brushes Okay, now that I got my water, I just dip that brush in the water and just dab it. Just gonna dab it on the paper towel. First color we're gonna start with is black. Now, if you look at the sample I have here, if you're going by what we're doing, uh, this sample here, we're gonna start painting the black areas first. Okay? So, the biggest back, the area I have in black right now is the top. And that's the night sky. So I'm just gonna start dipping my brush in black and just start painting it black. If you find that the paint is really too thick and it's not going on, um, you can dip your brush slightly in some water. And you notice when you dip it in water, it gets uh, a lot easier to spread around. You'll also notice that when you do dip it in water and you start painting, it's going to be a little bit um, thinner. So you might have to do a, a, a darker coat later on. That's okay because as long as we get coverage of what the shape, you already got it there, you're done, right? So uh, as long as you get coverage, cover the area in black, you can go back and add a, a thicker layer of black paint. If you've already finished the top part, what we're gonna do now is count three mountain ranges down. If you're following our model here, you're gonna go one mountain range, two, three, 
and that's our second black shade. Right there. And our third black shape is going to be on the very bottom, the very bottom of the painting. So when you're going around the shapes, like the circles or the uh, mountain ranges, you don't have to be exactly, don't worry about if you go over the lines, because you can always bring the shapes back later. And again, if you're you don't have to use the model that I have. You can change up the colors if you like. You don't want a black sky, you can have a purple sky, a blue sky. the moon you don't have to be exact okay. just follow the outline And what we're working today is, is uh, we're working with acrylic paint. <clears throat> acrylic paint is nice because it dries pretty quickly. You don't have to wait a long time as opposed to oil paints. It's really easy to clean up. So if you get it on you, you'll be okay. Just wash it off with water. So as you paint, you can see that my paint is pretty thin because I'm again I'm trying to get coverage. I want to see what it's going to look like. I just want to feel the space. You're uh, <laughs> you're the you a probably a squirrel. Uh, so one of the things you want to kind of focus on is just uh, getting rid of the the light color. Get rid of the white canvas. And if your paint, again, if your paint is too thin, just go over it again with some thicker black paint. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it a little trickier sometimes. And who knows, you might like it. Uh, you might, you might like the paint being thin. Again, this is all up to you. Looking good. 
doing, gentlemen? All right, so I'm almost covered. Done covered mine. Again, it's really how how thick you want the paint on. It's up to you how thin you want it. If you even want black on here, again, up to you. You said the third one. You do black too. Uh, yeah, so from the sky, <clears throat> you're going to yeah. count down the mountain ranges. The first mountain range, second, and then the third mountain range is going to be black. Okay. And I can bring by the, uh, the, the sample as well if you need it. And again, that's just if you want to stay with It's just a design. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry. Because we're gonna be painting things uh, over that, that black area on the sky. We're gonna be doing the stars, so we're gonna let that rest and dry for a little bit. Okay, if you are done with the black area, all three black areas, and, you're, um, and you want to go on to the next one, just make sure that you go ahead and clean the brush. What I'm, the first brush I'm using is this flat, flat brush. It's the biggest brush I have that you guys were given. Uh, it covers the most amount of area. It's nice, it's got a nice edge to make straight lines for those uh, mountain ranges. If you're done with the black color, go ahead and just rinse your uh, brush out in the water. And you notice if you rinse it out, the water is going to get really dirty. So if you need extra water, just let us know. Because you want the brush as clean as possible so it doesn't mix in with the other paints. If you're looking for clean separation of color. Okay. So for those of you following along and you're done with the black, you can see some people are, are pretty much done and some people are still waiting on it. The next color you want to go into, and if I go too fast, please just, you know, uh, let, let me know to slow down or, um, or to just hold on a second. And, and if you have any questions, go ahead and let me, let me know as well. The next color I'm going to tackle is uh, this yellow color that you see on the, on the sample. Now, the yellow color that I've made on the sample is a mixture of red, yellow, and a little bit of blue. You can go directly with yellow if you want. That's going to be the brightest option. It's going to be very, very bright yellow. If you'd like to mix it and tone it down a little bit, just mix in a, a little bit of yellow and red to make orange. And I'll show everybody online. Before I forget, you have two paper plates on your uh, table. You can use one paper plate as your mixing tablet, your mixing palette. That way you can keep your colors clean. Or if you don't mind, you can just mix your, uh, your colors uh, on the same plate. So I'll be mixing yellow and a little red to give me orange. So it's still kind of bright. Maybe I want it a little darker. You can actually just put a spot on your canvas after you mix the color you think you want because the color is going to look differently on the canvas against the white and against any other color that it's next to for example a black or, or a blue <clears throat> so if i put my uh, if i find the next the yellow part which is the moon 
and this little sliver here on the right hand side and you can see the sample it's one two three on the right going down and then one two three coming up from the bottom the little jagged edge it's basically the two pieces here Again, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know and then uh, I'll bring the sample around. So the moon and those two mountain rangers, rangers are gonna be the same color. So now that I've mixed my orange, I can, for example, just place it, a dot on the canvas. And maybe I think it's too bright. Well, just add a little bit of blue. And you don't have to add too much blue. Just a tiny bit will do. And again, you don't have to mix the colors. You can just put a solid color there. If you feel like you want to be adventurous enough to, uh, to uh, see what color mixing is, great. If you have already mixed color, by all means, please mix any color you like. So now my color is a little bit muted. It's a little bit darker. So let's say maybe I'm happy with that. It's kind of like a, a brown orange. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start painting the shapes that are orange and brown. If you find that you start painting and it's not the color that you're looking for, you can still adjust it a little bit by adding maybe more yellow or some more red. So you're on the which one now? So now if you go on the right hand side, and then you count three, three mountain ranges down. One, two, three. It's the one okay. that, uh, yeah, it does, it's the one that doesn't go all the way through to the, to the left. Okay. Yeah. So it's the moon, this little piece here, and then this piece on the bottom. So from the bottom, it's one, two, three. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And this one here is just this little piece that doesn't go all the way across. Okay. And you're mixing that with the yellow and what? Uh, this one is mixed with some yellow and some red. We're going to make an orange. If you want to make it a little darker, you add just a touch of blue. And that will bring uh, the lightness down. Okay. It'll go more, t more towards a, a neutral color. And I think somebody else was asking, how do I get the brown, I get like a dirtier color? And that's a good way to do it, is by adding a little blue to your orange. So here for uh, everybody at home, I'm using a little more yellow. But maybe I want it a little brighter. You don't have much to work with yourself. Don't worry about the edges if they're not perfect, that's fine. Let's get the coverage in there. And as a reminder, just can always add just a touch of water. Oops. <laughs> I'm putting in anybody's drinking water. Add a touch of water, and you, you're going to see that you don't need a whole lot of water to make it uh, easier to put on the canvas. You just need a little bit. Because as you remember, the more water you add, it's going to thin your paint out. <laughs> See, I'm not the only one. I know. I'm working. It's supposed to be on Thursdays, huh? <laughs>
I thought like that week ago. What are you doing here? How are you doing? Here we go. Distraction. <laughs> <laughs> you would hold out your hand. I don't want to wrap. Well, actually, yeah. just remember you have three brushes. So if you find yourself in an area where you gotta want some more detail, um, just don't forget that the, you got two smaller brushes as well for those. <clears throat> just remember to clean them between your uh, your colors. I find myself trying to remind myself not to get too particular on the small details, but it's hard when you get in the, into painting. So if, you, if you've applied the paint thinly, you can go back right away after it dries and put a thicker coat on it. Again, I, I uh, recommend using the big flat brush. That's going to give you the most coverage. mixing paints and then you're finding that maybe oh my color is not consistent it's not the same color that's okay I mean if you haven't mixed paint before you're probably gonna run into that and if you have mixed paint before you might be able to color match your previous color but if you don't match the same color it's fine because it might add a little extra character to your uh, to the painting Kind of blocked in my yellow and on the mountains. So I'm gonna go start on my moon. God, man, now come on, man. <laughs> so for the moon, maybe I feel like making it a little lighter, and but I still wanted the same color as the mountains. So I'm just gonna mix the same orange, red, yellow, and blue. But I'm gonna add a little bit of white. So I've added a little bit of white and uh, some more yellow. And you can see, from or for the people at home anyways, that uh, it's getting a little uh, lighter. So I'm going to color my moon just a little bit lighter by adding yellow and white. And I'm just going to smear it around. Again, don't feel like you have to be exact and covering your shapes <laughs> 
So if you've gotten this far on the model, you can already see that something's forming, like these shapes are forming uh, just by these simple uh, shapes and colors. I've only used two colors, and you can kind of see that we're getting, you know, a night nighttime sky with uh, something that looks like a moon, but it's coming together. If on the moon, you feel like giving it a little more texture, more uh, something else other than the flat color, you can, like I painted my moon a little lighter. So you can go back to the darker orange, mixing yellow, red, and a little bit of uh, blue. To go back towards that uh, that darker orange, and then we're going to make the the surface of the moon. So I'm just going to start on the bottom right, just making some random marks. So these darker marks are going to act as, you know, the craters of the moon, the uh, the uh, the texture of the moon. So instead of having like a flat orb, flat, a flat orb or a circle, it gives a little bit of depth. And this also tells us where the light's coming from. But you can really just achieve this by just a few marks on the, on the right side, or maybe you want the marks on the left side, and that's the shadow area of the moon. don't have to get too involved with that part before you start to see some sort of depth so for the shadow it's I went back to the yellow mountains the orange mountains so it's a yellow a red and a tad of blue just a touch of blue and like I said, the more you, you mix, you're gonna be you're gonna be able to see what how each color affects your mixture. If I mix a yellow and and a red just to create an orange, you just add a drop of blue. You can see how it, how much it affects it because you don't need a whole lot. You'll find out quickly that you put too much, you know. But uh, it's easy correctable. So if you put too much blue and it's too dark, well, let's add a little yellow to lighten it up, you know. So now that I'm, I'm putting the shadow, I'm done putting the shadows on the moon, my moon. And I noticed that maybe my yellow, my orange mountains or my yellow mountains are still a little thin from when I do the water. So I can go back and just lay a thicker, thicker layer of paint on top of that. Don't worry if you're working on one shape and you get paint on the, uh, the shape next to it. You can always go back and fix that. So what is that you're fixing right now? So now I'm going back to my mountain ranges here. Okay. The, the yellow or the orange mountain ranges. 
and I'm putting a thicker layer of paint there because when we started, I just put a thin layer just to cover the shape, right? So, okay, I want this mountain range to be orange. I'm gonna cover it quickly using a little water just so I can cover the white part up. Then after it dries, go back and make a thicker uh, layer of paint on top of that. But if for some reason, you know, you like the thinner layer of paint, you like the way it looks, you like the different, uh, the texture, the different uh, transparency, and that's fine just to leave it like that. There's no specific way to do this. There is no specific way. Nope. You can follow follow the model. Uh -huh. You can try to get close as you can, if you as close as you want to to the colors. Um, and um, like I said, you don't even have to mix. But if you feel brave enough or adventurous enough to mix, you'll see how how many colors, how many different directions you can go with with just three colors, right? Okay. Blue yellow, red, which are commonly known as a primary color. And those colors, that's all you really need, along with the, maybe the black and the white. But the blue, yellow, and the red will create lots of colors. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like we're uh, I'm at a point where I've gotten coverage enough where I can take a break. So we're now we're gonna take a break and I'm gonna bring in uh, bring in Michelle to give you guys uh, a little information on uh, mental health and art. Good morning, Good morning Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> hey! We can talk now. <laughs> Freedom, go for it. Now, uh, this is actually beautiful as I walked around and looked at the artistic ability. But the fact that you guys are focused and into it, that's the whole point of art therapy. Art therapy is a perfect outlet. It doesn't have to be perfect. It shouldn't be perfect. It shouldn't be fun. There's no there's no purpose to being pressured. If you do that, then you, you miss out the enjoyment, right? So anyway, art therapy is a way to express one's emotional well-being. Um, art Thank therapy you. is one that you can express your emotional self. For some people, communicating is difficult um, if they're not able to express themselves with words. And art therapy gives you an outlet to be able to express your creative expressions. But not only that, whatever you're feeling inside is actually beneficial for veterans, specifically veterans now not saying that everyone else cannot benefit from it because we all can um there's something about it there's something about the colors that that speaks to a person or being able to put your brush in that board and being able to just awesome. you know just who said awesome I said, I said awesome anyway so you do not have to be artistic for art therapy and i said that before um it can be for anxiety it helps reduce anxiety um there is a method that you can also do to release your stress, so that goes with anxiety. The benefits of it is self-discovery. Um, one doesn't know what one is able to do until you actually put it to practice. Uh, there is something about the idea of doing something new that's very resistant, but once you get into the flow of it and try something new, I think it will be interesting and surprised to see what you can create. But remember, we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for a way to release emotions, to release stress, to release anxiety, as an outlet to communicate, whether it's to our family members or to ourselves, just a way to calm ourselves down. I think I've said it to some of you here before, that I love the beach. 
I can't paint, but I have a painting in my office that reflects the beach. And when I look at that painting, there's a sense of calmness. There's a sense of um, peace that comes with that. And I think that's what art therapy does. Another benefit still is the self-esteem. Um, this process will give you the feeling of self-accomplishment. It helps you to appreciate the simple things. It also gives you confidence. Um, especially if a lang expressive language is an issue, being able to express it through art will be helpful. Um, emotional release. The greatest benefit of art therapy is giving you a healthy outlet for expressing your feelings and letting go of fears. Something about just putting them pen and paper. Anyone here journal? Journal? How what does it do for you? Anxiety. It releases anxiety. So art therapy works in the same concept. And I know for some people when we think art therapy, it's only this, but it can be through acceptance, expressive music. It can also be through journal writing. It's the same process. Um, stress relief. It helps with depression. It helps to reduce trauma. And it helps with the physical and mental being. Can I ask when you journal, is it just your physical body or your mental state that's at ease as well? Mental. There you go. Thank you. Um, so anyway, it helps with stress, it helps with anxiety, it helps process one emotional well-being, and it also gives you something to do in a creative manner. As I walked around, I looked at each of your stuff, I'm like, man, this is good. And everyone was so in tune and focused, and it's beautiful. So thank you for doing it, thank you for participating, thank you for trying something new. Start, starting something new is not always easy. But once you get into it, it's to show you you can get out of your comfort zone and it reduces that stress and that anxiety level. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. <laughs> See, now you know why she's here. <laughs> yeah, she's working. Not to visit us, but to work. Yeah. <laughs> she don't like us. I'm walking away. <laughs> See? <laughs> Okay. Anybody need more paper towels? Water, paint? Anybody else need paint?
Um, hi again, my name is Michelle. So I'm going to close with this. Our mental health is sacred, it's important, and it's vital. Um, it keeps us sane, it helps us connect with our loved ones. And so part of this process to be able to be able to treasure our mental health. Um, if you need support, we got the VA, we got the crisis line, you have Nations Finest, former VRC. Um, we're all here to support and we're all here to help. But most importantly, we're here to protect each other's mental health. You guys have a good one. And we'll be coming back from break very shortly. Just slowly, gradually, until you get to your wanting. And if it's not dark enough again, just add a little bit of black, and that will uh, create a shade, a different shade of that color. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we're back from a break, and I see that a lot of people are doing pretty cool stuff, and it's it's really nice to see that people are, are branching out on their own ideas. If you are following the model I'm, I'm doing, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some blue to my mountain ranges. So if you see on the model, I have two different blues. I have a light blue and I have a little darker blue, more like a ultramarine blue. So for the light blue, it's the first it's the first mountain range on top of, of the model. That's the light blue that I'm using, and it's basically just the straight uh, the blue out of the uh, of the bottle. I'm not mixing it with anything. Always. If I if I want it a little lighter, I get, I'm going to add a little bit of white. So yeah. So I'm just going to drop some white into the blue. Really depending on how light you want that blue. I'm putting a dot on the, on the canvas. Okay, say I like it. I can continue. All right, again, if it's too thick, just dip it in water. And you don't have, even have to dip your whole brush in water, just dip the edge. And that, by, that might sometimes be enough for you to, uh, to be able to spread the blue around.
by now you kind of see you got you've gotten used to maybe your brushes you can see that if you use the edge you can make a nice clean line use a flat part will give you a lot more coverage I'm going over my lines too. Don't be afraid to go over your lines. Okay. So I have my top mountain range, which is a, which is a light blue, just a blue right straight out of the bottle with a little bit of white added to it. Okay. And now I'm going to continue with the light blue. The other light blue on the model is uh, the mountain range on the bottom. And if you're counting from the left hand side of the canvas, just count up three. One, two, three. And that'll be my light blue, my second light blue. If you are finished with your, your painting or uh, maybe you're at a point where you don't know what else you want to add, what you can do is paint the borders, paint the edge black. <clears throat> and as you can see on my canvas, it just gives it a little more uh, polished, more uh, a cleaner look as opposed to leaving it white. Unless you want to leave it white, that's fine too. But this basically gives it a little bit more of a, a completed look so you can just hang it. A lot of people, when they uh, purchase little uh, canvases like this, and when it's painted black on the edge, it's a little, it's easier for them just to put it on the wall. It makes it look a little more complete. The white kind of detracts the eye, but again, it's totally up to you guys. And if you've got some little white lines and you're trying to cover it at the end, um, that's fine. You can just go over it later on. As long as you get the colors on there, get your idea down, and then revisit the shapes. Alright, so now I'm going to go to my second mount, second blue mountain ranges. And those blue mountain ranges are a little darker than the, uh, the blue ones I just painted. So to make them darker, I'm not going to add black. I'm going to add a little bit of red to my blue mixture. 
Now, again, just start by adding a small amount of red and you can see what difference that makes. We're essentially gonna be making, going towards purple. The more red you're gonna to add to that blue, the more purple it's gonna get. So once you get a darker blue mixture you think you're happy with, again, you can test it on your canvas. Okay. And if I want it a little darker, just add a little more red. And try it again. Okay. Say I'm, I'm happy with that and I'll just go ahead and continue painting that darker blue If you mix a color, like I'm mixing this purple, uh, this darker blue, and you say, well, it's not dark enough, and I don't want it to get more purple, you can experiment with adding a little bit of black, just a touch of black. That will, that will create a, a, a darker shade of the color. So now I'm moving over to my second blue, second dark blue. Again, keeping consistent mixes if you, if you want. Red, blue. What was lunch? Um, I think it's like nachos. Mm -hmm. All right. Probably can. Don't 
Okay, <clears throat> right, so I, I pretty much have all my mountain ranges down. Once you get that down, what you can do is return. to the light blue, actually let's stay with the dark blue. What I'm gonna do is kind of drop in my cacti. So I'm gonna take a small round, small round brush and uh, use my dark blue. Break it down and you will uh, tie those canvases down. Okay. Okay, so I've gone back to my dark blue. And let's say I want to cactus in front of the moon. So I take my dark blue with my round brush and I'm going to lay it flat and just kind of drag it down, find a place where I want my cactus to start and just drag it down from a point up in the moon down to the first mountain range. And if you want it thinner, you turn, you turn the brush to the side and you paint with the edge. If you want a wider cactus, you just use it, use a flat side and push down. The harder you push down, the wider the bristles are gonna spread, creating a larger line. Okay, basically I just have a line, one line for the center of the cactus. Using the same brush, I'm just going to draw in the arms of the cactus. Pretty simple, just little U shapes. Alright, if you've drawn with the, uh, your cactus in front of the moon, you can already see it. a nice contrast between the moon, the light yellow moon, and the blue dark cactus. I mean, you can probably even see it back there, how yeah. the, back, uh, the dark cactus kind of stands out. And it doesn't take much. It's like, you know, a couple strokes of a contrasting color, and it, you really start to see image appearing. So let's say I want another cactus next to it, a little bigger. So I'm going to go back to continue with my dark, uh, dark blue. And I'm going to put my bigger cactus on the right side of this cactus I just made. But I'm going to hold my brush flat against the canvas and press down a little bit to give me a bigger line. Let's make it go above the moon. Okay, so there I have my center of my cactus. And by me uh, making it bigger, it kind of gives us a visual clue like something is closer to us. Usually when things go, go farther away, they get smaller. So 
So just by doing a bigger cactus next to a smaller cactus, it gives us a, a sense of space. So now I've got that, I'm just gonna draw in the arms of my cactus, just like I did the last one. You know, nothing, nothing complex, just little use. Boom, that's it, All right? If you wanna take this a little step further, <clears throat> So right there we have enough already. Okay, this is a moon and there's cactus in front of it. Let's take my uh, round brush again and I'm gonna go with my blue, and adding a little bit of white to it. Just making a lighter blue. And what I'm gonna do is just gonna go over the top part of the uh, cactus, just a little bit of line on top of it. I'm not gonna go all the way down the center Oops. of the cactus. Coming with the lighter blue, I'm just gonna drag it from the top. And as I'm dragging down, I'm kind of easing up the pressure a little bit. So now you can see that the top of this, this cactus stands out even more against the night sky, the black sky. This gives it a little bit more dimension to the cactus. Obviously it's not necessary, but it's just another idea that you can use to give the, uh, the, the element a little more texture, a little more uh, character. So I'm going to try that on the other cactus I just did, the smaller one. Just dragging a little bit. This also gives us a feeling like, oh, there's light coming from, from where we're standing too, to light up the cactus. And you can drop a tiny bit of the light blue on the arms as well. Okay, so once you've got your cactus where you want it, maybe you had, didn't put the light blue on it, but you at least got your cactus in there someplace. We're gonna go up to the sky again. And since we're nearing the end of the painting, the final element we're gonna be adding is the stars in the sky. Now, you can add white stars to the sky if you like. I'm going to add some like a, a brighter orange uh, stars and the brighter orange stars are going to play off of the uh, the brown the dark orange brown that I have on the hills and the uh, the yellow the golden brown I have on the moon so to do that I'm just yell adding a uh, yellow and red to make a nice orange So I've got a nice bright orange and I'm just going to start making them my stars on the sky. And when you make your stars in the sky, to make it uh, a little more like, if you want to make it more like you're really seeing stars, you want to vary your brush strokes. So you can tap it directly with the edge of the brush, just hit it directly, or you can just hold the brush on the side and just kind of tap it. It'll make bigger stars. Maybe it looks like planets or something like that. But the key is to kind of vary the sizes of the stars. It's a big one. And you can 
to see what happens, what it looks like when you use different parts of the brush. So on the, as the, uh, the stars get closer to the horizon, I'm gonna make a little bit of cluster of stars. And what that's gonna do is just give me a little very, uh, variance on, on the design of the stars, how they're spread out. So instead of them all being even over the night sky, if you look at the sky, you're gonna see little clusters of skies in certain areas and other parts of the sky are gonna be more open. And just tap it, varying your, uh, varying the side of the brush you use, the tip, the side edge, using it flat. Big dots, little dots. Another good thing to do if you, is if you have time, if you uh, is to take a step back from your painting. Take a step back. When you take a step back, you're going to see your whole painting all together. When you're close, you really don't get to see how all the elements come together. But when you take, the more you take a step back, the more you're going to see uh, how the painting fits as a whole. How all the elements that you chose and fit together, or don't sometimes. Sometimes you find out, you know, I should have stepped back a lot sooner. And I, <laughs> You know, I want to change some things. You know, it doesn't have to be complex. Put as many or as little stars as you want. So as I step back, one thing you're going to notice if you do the stars, the cluster of stars become more of a, a unified color as you step back. And you can see the farther you step back, the more you'll see a kind of a gradation from the, uh, the large amount of stars against the horizon as the sky begins to open up, the farther you go off to the sky. And those are some of the effects you can use just by dots, what size dots you use, what color dots you use how many you use around it all together. Uh, those are just some of the things you can use. All right. Does anybody have any questions that uh, whoever's following the model? Once you get to this point, you can go back and just clean up your your uh, your, your shapes. You want it straighter lines. You want to cover the little white parts of the canvas you left over. Just feel free to go ahead and finish it. You want to add something else. You want to start over. You want to just paint it over again. It's up to you. But essentially, you've all painted a landscape today. No matter if you feel like it looks representational of the real world or 
or not, you paint out a landscape. And lots of you painted from memory, which is a very key thing to, to remember in art. Because when you practice art, you practice the, uh, the, the act of observing. When you look at the world as an artist or say, hey, I'm gonna paint something, you're more observant of the world around you. And once you do that, your memory gets better, you're able to recall things in a, in a more detailed fashion. Yeah, I know what a nice guy looks like. Uh, it's not black like we painted. It's actually blue, some greens, some, you know, some purples at night. Uh, I know how to paint an eclipse now because I, I'm learning to observe life around me. All the things that I see, I see differently. You're going to be able to see things like of simple shapes. And that's one good thing about painting in this style is all these are simple geometric shapes. And simple geometric abstract shapes are basically what make up everything we see. Everything we see is kind of like abstract. The buildings, look at the buildings. Triangles, squares, uh, the cars, cubes, squares, circles for the tires. They're all geometric shapes that uh, you, you can break anything down to make it, to see it simply. And the more you practice art, the better you're gonna be to recall things and be able to uh, describe things to yourself and to others through the work you do. But, uh, is it good? Mm -hmm. say bye to here. Okay. Anyways, that concludes the, uh, the painting event. Like I said, you've all did a great job. You, you, you really just painted a, a, a landscape painting. You can say, hey, I painted a landscape. I did this, man. If you take a look around all the artwork you see here, it's gonna be different in some way, shape, or form. Even the ones I painted now, it's different from the one I painted last night, you know? And that's the thing about art too is, if you get 10 people in the room, you ask them to do a math equation, they're all, five plus five, they're all gonna come up with 10. If you have 10 people in the room, you ask them to paint uh, a desert night sky landscape, this is what you get. You get anything in the world, you know, you get things you didn't even think of. And then you can steal from the other artists, which is a, a tradition that artists have done, you know. So you're, you're, you're in line with the, with the greats, the, the masters of the art world. Now. You guys are landscape painters. Congratulations. Yeah.